How about now? Nope. How about now? Hello? How's this? Still not? Yes. All right, good. Thanks. Hi there. This is Marcel Marceau reporting from Los Angeles, California, where there has been uh, a, a sound deficit now restored. So I'm Danny Gregory. This is Draw With Me. We meet here every Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time, although this is not Eastern Standard Time here or Eastern Time. It is uh, Pacific Standard Time because I'm in Los Angeles, California, where we are spending a somewhat chilly week because it is my son's birthday and we decided to come over and, and check him out, see how it is. Also, escape the Phoenician heat. In Phoenix, it is... What is it going to be? 116? 18? 10? She's busy doing it. Anyway, um, yes, I think it's going to be close to 100, 116 degrees. So, yes. So, we're visiting uh, a friend's house here, and that's where I am right now. But being in Los Angeles, or certainly driving to Los Angeles from Phoenix, has made me think a lot about cars and trucks and motorcycles and buses and all those sorts of things. So that's what we're going to draw today. Um, I believe that Morgan has shared with you the link. I'm going to share it with you again, um, which is right here. So I'll move it down here. So this is, if you want to have a copy of all the pictures, this is where you can get them. These are the ones we're going to draw from today. Um, but, you know, in general, if you are new to draw with me, uh, there, we generally put out this reference picture a few days in advance, and uh, there's a bunch of different ways that you can find out about it. Follow us on Instagram, uh, join our schoolyard. We often put it on Facebook, I think, don't we, sometimes? Yes. And uh, also, you can uh, always uh, text me, and believe it or not, I will let you know. In fact, I sent out a text this morning to folks telling them where they can get this stuff and to remind them to join me. So if you'd like to text me, write down this number, 919-298-8117, and uh, we can chat telephonically. Well, not, we can't chat, actually, but we can text each other. So um, I'm going to move that out of the way now. So yes, yeah, so... Uh, US, US only. US only, yes, it's true. Unfortunately, the limits of technology... We forget that we are in a global world most of the time, but not when it comes to texting me. Only my fellow Americans can do that. I'm sorry. But the rest of you can reach me in a number of different ways. So anyway, it's nice to have these pictures in advance. But, you know, I'll put them up on the screen, so don't worry about it. Or you can, you can just use your own imagination and your own reference. So drawing cars is challenging. I still find it challenging. I've been drawing them for a long time because... There are a lot of things about cars that we think we know, but then when you really look at a car, it's actually kind of different. So there are elements of a cars, like for instance, the wheels can be really difficult to do. Drawing uh, a donut shape at an angle can be a challenge. A thing, another thing that we often screw up is the length of the hood and the length of the roof. And when the car's at an angle, it can be difficult. So, we're going to try and figure out some ways to overcome those or to live with them. Because living with wonkiness is our motto. We live with imperfection. So, um, yes. Uh, so let's, let's move over to my desk. And come along, my friend. Focus more nicely. Yes. So here... Is a VW microbus. I've seen an awful lot of these VW microbuses on the road here in Los Angeles. I mean, they haven't been making them for years, but uh, they're still really popular. And they can be quite popular with us drawing people, too, because if you think about it, a VW microbus is essentially a box, like a shoe box with wheels at each corner. It doesn't have a big hood. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward, I think. We'll see. We'll see. So let's figure out how we're going to draw this. And I'm thinking that I might do it in very bold strokes. I might start here with a marker. Um, 
I might just draw the, because it's conveniently been given us these two colors, right? So, and if you look at it, this is basically a pretty straight line that's going to go, uh, that's going to define this color. So I'm just going to, frankly, just draw this colored shape. And I may get some things wrong, but we'll correct those later on or not. So this is basically that orange part of the vehicle. So we'll see if that functions as a guide. I think it might. All right. I'm going to take my brush pen. Again, another forgiving instrument, the brush pen, because you can't really do stuff that's too detailed with it. So you don't worry quite as much about it. But um, I'm going to, for some reason, start with this bumper. Not sure why that's the first thing that came up, but it did. So there's the bumper. And now let's, let's focus on the important part, which is getting this. So I'm looking, and I see that this windscreen is kind of about the same a little bit smaller, but roughly the same size as that green panel, as well, or orange panel in this case. And then I'm going to draw this line that goes all the way back. And then there's this part here, and then this line. Um, and then I'm going to just knock out these windows. And I want to pay attention to how far they go back. So this window kind of goes back. I mean, you could measure them. It's roughly a third. It's not quite, you could get more accurate about it. But again, thanks to the forgiveness of this brush pen, I'm not really worrying too much about it. And then there is this kind of roof. So and there's some other lines, but that's kind of it, right? I mean, I sort of screwed up this part here, but that's roughly it. And then we can start adding some details. Add in some, we're not going to spend more than like, few minutes drawing each one of these things because we want to be, you know, my motto, what is my motto? That's right. Quantity over quality. Have that tattooed somewhere poorly, but yes. And then, okay, so now let's deal with the wheels. Now I'm going to continue to procrastinate and avoid dealing with the wheels yet. So I'm just going to draw in some more details. And you know, it's important to look at the stuff that's also inside that you can sort of see through the window. Don't get too carried away with it. But you know, that gives you a sense of the interior of the of the vehicle. You know, so you can sort of see the seat through it and uh, that kind of stuff. See a bit of the ceiling. Continue to see these little louvered panels here. And that curtain at back there. Okay. All right, the uh, door handle. But there doesn't seem to be any escaping that deal with these wheels. So basically, this is an oval, right? And then it has other ovals that go around it. And then it has another oval, let's just say. So that's sort of the side of the, v of the wheel. And then there's the part where it touches the ground, which is straight. And then this is basically just another oval, you know? So that is gonna, this is the front of the, of the tire. And there you have it. That's pretty much what it looks like. I made it, a, I made these a little kind of jacked up, a bit more jacked up than the real wheel is, but that's the deal of the real wheel. And now I'm going to do the same thing here. You can even draw little lines like that instead of coloring it in if you wanted to. Um, and then, of course, there's this back wheel. You can just see a little bit of it. I'm just going to paint in black in there. Um, and then there's sort of a bumper at the back. And a little doodad here. There's various other little details we can continue to put in, but that's basically it. And there's probably a wheel over here that I just can't quite see from this photo. One of the many problems with using f photographic reference instead of looking at the real thing. But, yeah, that's it. So that's my, that is my take on the VW Microbus. There's a bit of stuff here we could put in too, I guess. And if we wanted to be it really kind of fancy,
a little bit more personality. So there you go. Okay. I do regret maybe not leaving those white, but you know, living with regret is fine. So, okay, so let's move on. How are you guys doing with this? Getting them in? Okay. All right, let's move on to something perhaps slightly more challenging. Let's get rid of this micro bus and bring on this old truck. I like this truck. It's really cool looking, I think. Um, bulbous nose. So let's, uh, let's have a look and measure a couple things about it. So one thing I would say is, let's see if I can approximate explain this. Like, let's say this is the length of this truck, right? And you can kind of hold it up, move your pen around and say, okay, this is the length of the truck. So if I wanted to, I could mark that down. I could say, all right, here, how do I do this? Okay, here to here. So let's say that's the length of the truck. I'm just going to get a little bit fiddlier here than I'd like to, but I want to explain how to use your pen as a measuring device. So now that we have that, and we say, okay, that's the length. Now I can look here and I can say, okay, this part is where that back wheel is. Right? So that's more or less the middle of the truck. So that's good to know. So then I can say, all right, put this down again. Here more or less is the back wheel. Okay, so now that I know those two things, I know the length and I know where the back wheel is. So now I can say, all right, this is more or less of a straight line. The bottom here, don't want to run into that wheel necessarily. But another tricky thing that is easy to screw up is to look at the distance between here and the front, right? This is actually quite a large part of the truck. It's probably a third. So if I put it down, I'm seeing it kind of comes up to here almost. So that is important to know as well. So if I put my wheel, my, I'm gonna just rough in my wheel there. That's my wheel. And then my back wheel is sort of more or less there. And then that is my front bumper. Now I know with a certain degree of confidence that those are where those important things are. Okay, so now I can build off that. I can go, okay, let's go and put up that front fender. Kind of goes like that. And um, let's put this front part of the hood there. And then we can come back here. Now I can look at where is the back part of the passenger compartment, so more or less here, and the other part of the windscreen is more or less lining up with the back wheel, so I can put that there, and then I have my other window here. So it's really just this matter of taking a couple of crucial measurements and then kind of stacking everything off it. So there, I got that part right because as you can see, my back part of the compartment kind of lines up with where I had made that marking. And then I have my other fender there, my other headlight. And now I know that I'm pretty, I mean, these wheels are also, they're just circles, more or less circles because they're not at an angle. So that is pretty much correct. And then I can put in my, so this was the very back of the truck which means that the wheel is a bit forward. It's kind of there. And then the other, is that correct? Yeah, more or less. And then the other wheel was about there. And there's a bit more of a gap there between those wheels. They're probably theoretically, yeah. These back wheels, there are two of them on each side, so they're taking up a bit more, much, bit more room. But now I have my proportions more or less figured out. I mean, I'm knocking this out quickly, so my drawing itself isn't super, but um, that is more or less correct. In fact, let's try this. So the magic of video. Yeah, see, it more or less lines up. More or less. Pretty cool. All right. That was nifty. Okay, so there I have all my bits. Now I can put in my... Um, 
various landmarks inside the compartment there. And you can put in this, put in this. Fill in the wheels and so yeah, so this is this is pretty much okay. Now here's the thing that I will point out to you. It's tempting to get really excited about being able to do measurements like this. There's a downside. And the downside is you're drawing becomes just a little bit stiff because you've been focusing on the drawing. You know, your lines are a bit more hesitant. So I think that this has less personality than my drawing of the microbus, which I kind of just winged, right? Just knocked it out. But, you know, it's a good way of sort of, you know, you could do this as a sketch and then you could like take another piece of paper and put it on top, let's say, and you could then now that you can you can see it sort of through, and you could do another drawing that was just looser, faster, and uh, you know more expressive than this. Okay, so there you go. Let's try something else. How are you guys doing? Have a, a modicum of tea. Okay, Cynthia makes a good point, and I think she's talking about the microbus here, but she says. The part where it touches the ground is straight. That's the point. Is is you know the when we're looking at the microbus in an angle, that part of the of the tire is flat. It's straight. If you make it round, then it doesn't look like it's sitting on the ground. Cool. All right. Now let's get even fancier. So this is pretty a little bit more challenging feeling. Why? Because we have this perspective, right? We have this kind of enhanced perspective of this really long bus and the big face of it sticking, sticking in the sticking at us. So, um, you know, again, we could do some measurements. And the reason to do measurements here, I think, is to say to ourselves, this isn't as complicated as it looks. Okay, I'm just going to use the body of the pen. I'm going to say, okay. So there, that's it, the length of the, of the bus. And I see that that front wheel comes up to about here. Is that true? Let's say, let's say it's like that. So surprisingly short, actually, when you look at it there. Because we want to think that the, the front of the bus is, is smaller sometimes or sometimes bigger. I mean, we know that it doesn't represent a giant part of the bus because it is only the front. Um, but in fact, we see that it comes up to here. So when I lay my pen down, which I will now do, here's the back of the pen. And here's the front of the pen. And here's a spot of ink on my finger. Um, so now we can take this back, look at it again, and just say, okay, so here, this ridge part of the pen is more or less where the back of that wheel is. All right, so I'm just going to knock that wheel in quickly, and then I'm going to focus on drawing just the outside contour of this thing. I'm not going to get too nutty about it, but I'm going to just draw this contour, and I'm going to draw this back wheel back here because I know it's pretty close to the very back of the bus. And I'm going to go there and like that. And then I also might want to measure this very back part of the bus and go, OK, how big is it? Maybe it comes up to about there. So when I come to the front of the bus and I see how high that is, I say, you know what? This part here is about the same as that part there, this length, this, this height is about the same as just this part of the windshield. So that's kind of gives me a bit of confidence when I draw that, because I now know that I haven't distorted it. I mean, what is kind of handy about this bus is it has these lines on the side. So that is also a way of getting this perspective kind of 
easier, more correct, because you have these lines that sort of emphasize that perspective. I wouldn't get all kind of nerdy about drawing vanishing lines and all that. It just seems unnecessary. I mean, do it if you want. I don't think it's terribly helpful to me. I think just slowing down, taking a couple of key measurements is really the most important part of getting a sense of confidence. And that's really what most of this is about. It's like, how can you feel confident that you have the basic bits where they should be? You know? Then, so when I look at this, I see, I'm looking at where that radiator sits and where the headlight is, and then there's this doodad, um, and then where's the top of the radiator, sh the hood of the bus is right there, this black part, and then again, I'm going to do this thing with making sure that the, that, that tire feels like it's sitting on the ground. Um, and the inner bit. So now you can get, you know, you can get all into cool details and you could really um, make sure that you got every bit of the bus right. Get all those, there's so many little tiny things on this, lettering and lights and reflections in the windows and all that stuff, but I can't be bothered. There's the other uh, rear view mirror. See, again, it's interesting to look like, where, look at where this mirror is. It's not where, you, it's, it, it has a very different relationship to this one. And there's various other bits here, and headlights and so forth. So, yeah, so that, that those are the basic structural elements of the bus. There's another wheel somewhere back here. That's it. <clears throat> the bus. Okay. Let's dr move this bus out and try something else. What do we've got next? Here we go. Let's check this guy out. Oh, yes. Speaking of motorcycles, I guess you guys know about Sturgis. Sturgis has been started this weekend. It is a giant rally for Harley Davidson enthusiasts that is somewhere in the Northwest. I forget where it is exactly, South Dakota or something. And uh, they have something like, it's like several hundred thousand people have gathered and they're mocking people who wear masks. Um, and uh, yeah, huge crowds of people gathering in tight areas in one town, one little tiny town. So, yeah. I hope that they're going to be okay. Okay, so let's look at this motorcycle and see that what is it? It is basically a circle. with another circle in the front. And then the gap between them is a little bit more than one of those wheels. So let me just move my pen back to see if that's the case. So let, let, let me see, is this, see how the pen can, the, this part of the pen is here, the width of that wheel. I move it forward and it almost touches the front wheel. And then the front wheel is is of course the same size as the back wheel. So now we can say to ourselves, essentially this is three equal sh equal sizes. So we could, you know, we could, um, again, I'm just gonna do the structure. So I'm, I'm gonna reveal parts of the wheel that would have, will of course be covered, but there's that. And then I measure my wheel. I put another me measurement here, and then I can draw my other circle. Doesn't matter if it's not a perfect circle, please don't tell the motorcycle police about that, but that's more or less it. So now that we know that, now we just have to put in all the other stuff. So I'm going to start with this loud pipe here, 
And then I'm gonna look at how this 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 pipe is actually an interesting exhaust is an interesting kind of uh, guide for me also because um, it basically is drawing a line that goes straight and then I can build off it. So I can I kind of got that part wrong and redraw it. Is it racier than I'd made made it there? And then, then there's the gas tank, which is another key feature. And then there's the, whatever that thing is, and there's this triangle bit. And then there's my rear fender with a thing on it. And then there's this part. And then that's more or less the main bits of it. And then there's the handlebars. There's some other engine bits, carburetor, and more these pipes that come down, there's various stuff I'm just going to scribble in because I don't even know what it is. Um, and again, this would be, if this was a real motorcycle, I could see spending hours drawing it because it has so many cool parts to it. If it was really here, sitting in this kitchen, um, it would be really fun to draw. There's a place in Los Angeles that we used to go to every weekend. It's called Deus Ex Machina uh, in Venice. And... It was like a coffee shop slash motorcycle store, and it was so cool. I would I drew lots of motorcycles there, just while we were having coffee in the morning, because it was so just hanging all over the place. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's a motorcycle, and maybe maybe this bit isn't quite right, but mine is a little boxier and less racy than the original one, which is like a kind of nineteen sixties. Royal Enfield. Maybe it's even earlier than that, but it's a classic. Much more interesting to draw than this sort of uh, more modern um, motocross-inspired ones, racer kinds. I like these old ones. So there you have it. Motorcycle. Wear a helmet. Although a lot of places here in the south West, you don't need to wear helmets, which is always kind of weird to me to see guys just zipping along. It looks very free, but also kind of terrifying, massive brain injury waiting to happen, but I'm just a chicken, so what do I know? Okay, motorcycle. <clears throat> and finally, what do we have here? Okay, so this car, Hopefully we've, we can apply some of the things we've just been uh, experimenting with here. What do you think? So we could do this a couple different ways. We could do it with color. We could draw the contour of the outside. We could, so I kind of mentioned a few different ways of doing this, right? The way that I did the microbus was basically a chunk of color that represented the, the main part of the body. And then I sort of had to correct it by drawing lines on top of it. Another way of doing it is by taking a single element uh, and then like a, uh, and then building off it. So you could draw, say, the one wheel and then draw the next thing next to it, the next thing next to it, which is more or less how we drew um, how we drew this truck, right? And then another way to do it could be just to draw a contour of the outside. So kind of thinking that I want to do that with this one. So let me just reverse this guy into the corner a bit. And I'm not going to worry about measurements. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to re react to the kind of personality of this car because it's so, so beautiful, this car. Now here's, here's the tricky part. So if you look at this bit here, the roof, that line up there of line, that's a part that you can really get wrong by making it not long enough or too long. And so we want to really be, we want to be thoughtful about that. And I want to look at landmarks as I'm going so that I'm not just, I mean, because I could just do that, boom. Maybe I got that right, I don't really know. But for now, I'm just going to leave that gesture there because the nice thing about a gesture line is it does have some personality. And then I'm going to, Move in on that the kind of outside surface of the wheel, and I'm gonna 
come down here, draw this wheel. No idea if that's correct, but it feels. <laughs> see if that, we'll see if that was right. Okay, so how will we see? We'll see by drawing in some of the details. So, I'm just going to draw in these bits of the wheel and draw in this back guy, color that in, and what else? I'll come over here, draw that headlight in, and then see how this comes down here. This goes across. There's these various bumper bars. And go through here. More bumper bars. License plate. And other headlight. This line kind of goes back and wraps around. And OK, so now I can come back up here and look at windows. Window, window, window. and. goes across. There's this kind of really cool visor thing here. And you can see out the back window from the front. And then there's this line that goes like that. And then there's this sort of little running board here. And then there's All right, and then so I, I need to give this, this is not quite right, that should be more like that. And headlight is a bit lower. All right, not too terrible. There we go. What do you think? Let's, let's park the real guy on top. In the ballpark. Maybe move him out a bit, see? Yeah. All right. There you have it. Now we could have fun, and we could go in and we could color stuff, and we could um, we could add a lot more details. I could also bring in um, another pen. Let's say I brought in an O3 here, so instead of my brush pen, and I could say I'm going to start drawing more details in here using just something a little narrower, tighter. Sometimes this helps, sometimes it ruins it. You'll see. You'll see how it works for you. Because it does, it does add an interesting contrast, um, but it also might feel like it's coming from a different place. You decide what expresses how you feel about this car. Because I think this car is just brimming with personality, right? It's like a, there's a real character to it that um, this car is probably what, looks like it's late 30s. See, it's sort of interesting also to, um, to do lines and hatching in addition to coloring in these big black areas, because they give a bit more energy, I find, to the areas that are pure black than the areas that are pure black, you know? So there's just a bit more. Then you can also go in and, and tighten up and re-emphasize certain lines. And there's something kind of forgiving also about drawing a car with multiple lines because, you know, it suggests movement. And that gives it a nice kind of energy. Um, you know, so by coloring in areas with hatching, 
you get something else going on there. And even over, going over lines again, like I'm doing here, so you go over them, and then you get a different kind of quality to it. I think my biggest error here was that this windshield is not as wide as I made it. Because when I look at the way that this is, this should line up. It does line up here. Actually, it is right. Okay. That's another good instance of like thinking that something should be a certain way and then realizing, no, it actually isn't. I did get it right. Thank you, drawing brain. So yeah. Um, and then this might be good or might not be good. We'll see. See, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna color in the whole car. I'm just gonna do the shadows to see if it gives it a bit more dimension. Because that's the thing about this hood is it has. It only has these holding lines on the outside, but there is actually a lot of um, variation that seems to be happening because of the shadow there. So, not sure that helped. Probably didn't. But cool. Alrighty, so let's let's look back at what we've done. Car, motorcycle, bus, truck. Still my favorite, but maybe that's because it's the, the vehicle that I like the most. So yes. Um, cars. So uh, hopefully that gave you a little less fear about drawing cars. I mean, it's, I have to tell you, it's, it's something I've worked on for a long time and it's, it is really tough. It's, uh, it's something that working, when you're doing a real car, when you're there, because it's such a large object and where you are is going to also affect, a, there's going to be a lot of distortion. There's a couple of sketchbook school teachers who are excellent at drawing cars. Uh, Franz Van Stone is really great at it, but um, I also really love the work of Lapin. Because Lapin, what he does is he does portraits of people as well that are really distorted, as if there was a macro lens. And for those of you who took urban sketching, our urban sketching course, you'll remember he does uh, a demonstration where he draws a coffee truck. It's just one of my favorite things we ever made. Um, and uh, that was really, really fun. So drawing cars is, is something that can, be, that can really be an expression of who you are as an artist and how you see the world. You can draw cars so they really look like human beings or they have the qualities of human beings. There's a lot of individuality and personality to them. I find cars that were made in this millennium to be less interesting by and large. Older cars are cooler. Um, motorcycles are always so interesting because of all the stuff on them. Their basic structure is pretty simple, but there's so many twos and boxes and all that kind of stuff to do. That's pretty cool. So um, that is exciting. All right. Well, that was fun. Thank you so much for joining me. We are heading back to Phoenix, and we have a long drive ahead of us, so maybe I'll draw some cars there. Um, drawing cars is also a great thing to do if... You know, these days, we often find ourselves sitting in parking lots waiting to go in somewhere, right? You go to the doctor, you go to a, a, a store, or whatever, you, you have to wait in your car. Draw the other cars around you that you can see through the windshield. It's a great um, thing to, to, a great way to practice. It's also really fun to draw the interior of your car, to draw the dashboard and uh, try and get all the dials. And that's another way of also working on this challenge of drawing circles and ovals at angles um, is, you know, dashboards are full of lots of 
fairly complex shapes, usually out of perspective. So if you're sitting in the passenger seat, you're looking across. So try that. It's really, it's really a fun thing to do as well. All right. Well, good. Well, this has been fun. Um, I also want to remind you, in case you didn't know, that um, we have a really great workshop coming up with Jim Fazio that I'm really excited about called Mixed Media Garden. And that's an opportunity just to play around with art supplies. So if you haven't had a chance to uh, check that out, please do. Um, here it is. Uh, you can go there and s just find out a bit more about it because I think it's an opportunity to spend uh, an afternoon drawing together and learning um, some amazing new stuff from Jane, who's one of my oldest friends and, uh, and a great artist and teacher. Um, and also, if you haven't yet, sign up for my list. So every Friday tomorrow, I will send out an email essay, just an essay of stuff I'm thinking about or ideas I have or ludicrous notions. And uh, if you sign up for the list, I'll email it to you. No cost, no obligation, um, but people seem to like them. So you just go there and uh, tell me where to send it. So check it out, sketchbooksful.com slash Danny's hyphen list. Thank you again for joining me. I will see you hopefully from Phoenix next Thursday. In the meantime, be safe, be healthy, and draw as much as you possibly can. See you later. Share. Oh, yes, of, of course, share. I always forget this part. Um, share, if you want to, on social media. SBS, hashtag SBS draw with me. That is where you can um, identify that this drawing was from this because it's great to be able to see all the cards that everybody drew together. If you're on the, sc uh, the schoolyard, of course, you can throw it up there and we will be able to see it too. But hashtag SBS Draw With Me is how you can put it on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. I don't know what else there is out there. Um, whatever it is, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. And I'll see you next time.